Some of you may have given a presentation before in a class. For others of you, it may be the first time. In this video, we are going to talk about how to effectively design and give a professional presentation. In Design Lab, we use a critique approach to evaluating and giving feedback on media projects. We call it our CAT principles. The first part of our CAT principles is concept. This is the main idea or argument that you are trying to convey through your design. No matter what kind of project you are working on, the most important thing is that your ideas are being articulated clearly and effectively. Part of concept is understanding who your audience is. Just as you would write or speak differently to a group of elementary school students than you would to a group of college students, so too should your intended audience impact your design. Aesthetics are the next principle. Aesthetics are typically a measure of visual and or auditory quality. One aspect of aesthetics is considering the format of your project. Different forms of media have different aesthetics to take into consideration. For example, a video has different aesthetic principles than a PowerPoint slideshow. In a speech or presentation using a visual aid or slideshow, another aesthetic consideration is the balance of the speaker and the visual aid. The speaker is the main focus and the visual aid is there to support the speaker. A flashy or moving visual aid can take the focus of the audience away from the speaker. The largest consideration for aesthetics, however, is whether or not your project is using the principles of good design. We will learn more about the principles of good design in the next section of this video. Finally, there are the technical principles of design. This includes using the right software for the job, but it also includes more abstract considerations. Is your work free of typos and errors? Are your charts, graphs, tables, and images high quality? Thinking critically about technical considerations will make your work appear more polished and professional. For your presentation, you will likely be using software such as PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides, or Canva. It is important to use software you know or to learn the software well enough to establish an easy workflow so you can spend less time focusing on troubleshooting and spend more time on the content of your presentation. Our friends at Software Training for Students can help you learn the best tools for these programs. They offer free workshops on PowerPoint and Keynote, as well as one-on-one -on -one appointments or drop-ins in the Design Lab to help with the technical issues you may encounter. Coming back to aesthetics, let's talk about the principles of good design. In the Design Lab, we teach design prep. That is, we teach four principles that you should keep in mind whenever you are working on a digital media project. These are contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity, or C-R-A-P. That spells design. C is for contrast. Contrast can be achieved through variations in size, color, line thickness, and spacing. Designers rely on contrast to create a hierarchy of information to let the audience know what is most important. Right now, these four pieces of information are not differentiated from each other. But after we make some small adjustments, the information has a clear hierarchy. This leads the eye to prioritize the large pink information over the smaller black information. Contrast is also a function of legibility. Notice how the lack of contrast in color between the background and font makes the text difficult to read. Just by changing the background color, we can make the information much easier to understand. Further, try to avoid using images in the background since often images will also make the text hard to read in places. Stick to simple backgrounds. R is for repetition. It may be tempting to throw many different colors and shapes into your design, but this can be overwhelming to your audience. Instead of trying to include too many objects of varying shapes and colors, we can use repetition of our main design element, the pink hexagon, to create a cohesive design package. This works the same with fonts. Another place where repetition is important is in the selection of images. Let's look at this example. These three icons of food are disparate in that they all have different styles. But we can create unity in the images through repetition and bounding shape and caption. Better yet, we can use a similar style for all three images, making the design feel more cohesive. A is for alignment. Our brains want everything to be organized and struggle when things are not in alignment. Compare these lines, which are all over the place, to these lines, which are intentionally placed in alignment with one another. Let's look at this slide. There's something off about the alignment here. 
Can you spot it? The text is slightly off-center. By moving the text to the middle, the slide looks more polished and aesthetically pleasing. Finally, P is for proximity, which deals with the distance between elements in our design. Through proximity, we can create visual relationships that lead to an easier understanding of materials. Things that are close to each other will automatically feel more related. Proximity can also remedy some confusion. For example, when captioning images, it is important to keep the text in close proximity to said image. Even though the connections may seem obvious to you, being intentional with captions makes sure the audience can easily follow the information presented to them. You never want to give your audience an opportunity to misunderstand you. For the final part of this video, let's talk about ethos. You want to convey professionalism when giving a presentation. That doesn't just mean dressing for the part and having a polished slideshow. It also means being prepared to present. Here are some ways you can engage your audience. First, practice. Don't wait until the last minute. Prepare your presentation ahead of time so you can have time to practice. Practicing will allow you to have a good pace so you don't run out of time or not use enough time. Second, be confident. A lack of confidence will undermine your expertise. Third, be enthusiastic, or at least don't sound bored. A monotonous tone can bore both you and your audience, no matter how interesting the topic is. Finally, tell your story. The audience doesn't want to hear a long summary of past research for a majority of your presentation. They can read that on their own. Tell the audience about the experience and research you did. Giving a presentation is like telling a narrative. You start with a hook. After that, you provide information in a well-paced manner, steadily building to your main point. After your main point, you work towards a conclusion that neatly wraps up your argument. Let's recap. In this video, we looked at the cat of effective design. That is, concept, aesthetic, and technical elements of a presentation. We also looked at design crap, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. These aesthetic principles should be taken into consideration when creating a digital slideshow. Finally, we learned about some ethos principles that you can use to have a polished and professional presentation. We hope that you will apply these helpful tips in the creation of your presentation. Design Lab is here to help you work effectively in digital media. We offer free one-on-one -on -one or small group appointments to provide personalized recommendations and feedback on your projects. We can help you at any point in the creation process. We can help you brainstorm ideas and think through the organization. We can recommend tools, resources, and equipment. And we can be a second set of eyes throughout the creation and editing process. Due to the pandemic, we have suspended all in-person appointments, but we are now offering appointments via video calls. To make an appointment, just go to the Design Lab website and click the pink Make an Appointment button. Have just a quick question or want to drop in and see if someone's available now? Start a chat with us using our new chat service, which is open anytime Design Lab is open. Click Chat with Design Lab in the main menu of the Design Lab website. We look forward to working with you.